I'm not gonna lie to you guys, my battery's on low and I've got to leave in 15 minutes to go to lunch. So we're gonna blast through this. I read seven books this month and two of them, three of them were audiobooks, two out of them I just read twice within a week because they were so great. Um, so let's go through them all quickly. The first book was A Brief History of Everyone Who Ever Lived by Adam Rutherford. This came out in 2016 and I knew um, Adam Rutherford for his work on The Curious Cases of Rutherford and Fry, which is a Radio 4 podcast that he hosts with Hannah Fry, who wrote um, Hello World, which I've also talked about. This is about uh, genealogy and it's kind of split into two parts. It's like, the, like what led us up to now and um, what that can tell us about us at the moment. And I did actually audiobook this. I saw it in a bookshop a while ago and I just kind of like picked it up. And then I sat down to read it and I was like, oh, actually, I'm, never, I'm, never, I'm not gonna read this at a pace that's gonna be enjoyable to me. So I decided to get the audiobook instead. Um, and yeah, it was good. There are a few really interesting sections, notably two. Um, firstly, about like uh, race and how race is kind of, it's not a biological construct at all. It's just a social construct. Um, he talks a lot about how like two black people can be more like genetically different than a, a white person, a black person, and how they're, they're just such arbitrary divides we set that aren't actually based on anything biological. Um, he also had a really interesting section about incest um, and about the, the Habsburg um, family of, of Spain. There's this thing called the inbreeding coefficient, which is like how much DNA you share that is going to be problematic. And if like two siblings have a child, it's 0.25. And Charles II, although he didn't, his parents wouldn't, um, maybe cousins, maybe like a cousin and uncle or something like that. Um, they, he was actually more inbred. He had like a higher co like inbred coefficient um, than than like the, the genetic product of two siblings. And that's because if you went back eight generations, there should be 254 people in your family tree. But because all of the inbreeding in the Habsburgs, they, he actually only had like 82 people in that tree because they all just married each other. That's what led to like such deformities in their family. Habsburg lip, Habsburg chin, is it? Um, so that was really interesting. Next thing I read was Crudo by Olivia Lang. Um, this was interesting. I was going to do a video about it, how I didn't really like it, how I felt like weirdly superior to the main character. Um, and then the more I thought, think about it, the more I'm just like, the, my views on this book are like solely because I read it where I am mentally right now. So this is about a 40, 40 year old woman um, who was getting married and it's the summer of, of 2017. Um, and like, I can imagine reading this in 10 years and loving it. And, and yet like right now I can't like it. So I've, I've decided to not really put my opinions out this out in the world um, because it wasn't made for me. It wasn't made for me. Don't read books that aren't made for you. Well, read books that aren't made for you, but if you dislike something purely because it's not made for you, that's what I'm always trying to do here is that if I give something a bad review, it's not because it's a terrible book, occasionally it may be, but usually it's just because it's not a, the book for me when it's definitely the book for someone. So yeah, I'm trying to be more conscious about that um, and less freaking egotistical. Yes. The third book I read as an audio book, I don't have a physical copy of it, was The Perennial Seller by Ryan Holiday. This came out in 2017 and I cannot believe I'd waited so long to read this. It was really, really good, so much so that I read it twice in one week. It's about radical marketing, creating a product with the sole intention of longevity and like how how products become products that last a long time. And um, I, I, it's like really hard for me to pick out any individual aspect of this book. Um, I, I need to read it again, maybe physically read it and write some notes. Uh, but I just left it feeling so eyes open and so excited about things. And actually this is what led to me, um, I'm working on charreads.com, uh, a website where you can, but I kind of like realized that all of this, I have quite a lot of content on YouTube and it's all really locked up into, well, firstly owned by Google and then secondly, their interface and how you can interact with it. And between like YouTube and Goodreads, I actually have just like a lot of, I would say interesting stuff that's really interrelated um, that could just provide value on its own in like an external way. So I spent the last month like 
furiously working on this website and it's not quite ready yet and it will include a newsletter which is going to be a big part of it um, and looking forward to announce that next month um, but yeah all because of this book it just really spurred me on I'd love to do a full review of it um, but yeah I need to <laughs> actually figure out what I learned from it besides just being like it was amazing and I'm really excited. I also read Everything is Figureoutable by Marie Folio. I listened to Perennial Seller both times I listened to it like during my reading of this book because I read it quite slowly and the whole time I was like oh Perennial Seller is just so much better. <laughs> um, I've done a full video of this uh, which I will link below um, and it was good but it's no Perennial Seller. One of the really distinct differences I notice is that a lot of the like almost all the examples in here were either from personal experience from Marie Forleo or from like research says whatever um but the thing with Ryan Holiday in all of his books is that you can tell that there's a lot of research that have, has gone into it because all of his examples are cultural or historical um and I think that it just kind of gives it more breadth and therefore more depth um which I really love. Next book I read was The Call of the Wild by Jack London. Um, I didn't realise that there was like a film coming out with Harrison Ford in it um, until I, I was like 30 pages through this book and then I saw an ad for that on the side of a bus um, and one I was like oh it seems like I'm reading this book because there's a film coming out which I'm just not and two it kind of presented a view of like one man one dog bond life together and um, kind of set me up for not what this book actually was. This also, I didn't realise it, but this is bound up with a few short stories. So I expected the book to be 140 pages long. It was actually like 90. And it just like wound up really quickly and ended when I just felt like it got into a bit that was really interesting. So this was published in 1903. Um, and it was, it's about a, a dog that is stolen from his, he lives with a judge in California and um, stolen to become a sled dog up in the Yukon during the um, gold rush. It's from the perspective of this dog Buck and it's all about how he is kind of like becoming less domestic and becoming more feral and like realizing all of these things that are like deep in his ancestral history that haven't been practiced for generations um, and it's quite sweet and uh, and and good but it just like didn't really hit the spot for me especially the the kind of I, mostly my expectations but um it just kind of had like a few distinct chunks and some chunks were like really interesting and then other chunks and you wanted to like last for 100 pages and then suddenly it would just like be over uh which is a shame but like nice to read i do want to read jack london's other books which are like nothing like this one um but you know a nice sweet little one next book i read for my book club like sharp left turn um notes from underground by Fyodor Dostoevsky I have made a video about this I feel pretty ambivalent um about it I I did really enjoy reading it but I think it was it was very thought-provoking so um check out the video for more information on that one and finally my crown and glory of the month the trauma cleaner by Sarah Krasnostein this was amazing I've I made a video about it go and watch that video um but it is about a woman who has had such a hard knock life, just like a really phenomenal life story, but also now is a trauma cleaner. So she cleans up after like murder, suicides, squalor, hoarding, um, like meth labs. <laughs> like, uh, and it's um, it kind of like interlinks the, the stories of her past with the, the stuff she's doing in the present, um, really like connecting to individuals and empathizing with them even though they've like ended up in such terrible living situations um it's really great and what i just said doesn't do it justice hopefully my video will have done it justice um uh, but this is really great anyway so whew, went through it and i'm i'm not late for lunch <laughs> yay um i hope you've enjoyed this video i've i read quite a lot and i it was really some wide ranging wide ranging stuff let me know what you have read this month um, and if you're particularly excited about any of the books I've mentioned. And um, yeah, I'll see you next month, hopefully with a whole new Char Reads platform to explore books on. It's going to be great. It's going to be great. All right.